welcome to the Trails Collective interview series. Uh, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. So where are you out of right now? Uh, right now I'm in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, Civil War yep. fame. Civil War fame, right, right next to Gettysburg as well. Actually, there was a guy, um, he was from, there's a Civil War museum. You'd think it would be in Gettysburg, but it's not. It's in Harrisburg. They must have won a bid or something. But I do a lot of running up by the Civil War Museum on my lunch breaks when I'm, well, when we're not working from home and I'm actually working. Um, and there's a, a plaque. I went in it once and there's a plaque and it dedicated, it's dedicated, dedicated to this guy who he was like, I can't remember. He was, uh, he was an African American and he like, he went through, he was a soldier in the civil war. So he like basically fought for his own freedom and all this stuff, or maybe he was already free. I can't remember, but he went through civil war, slavery, the end of slavery, world war one, world war two, and then he died. So like, I mean, he was like a hundred years old and he saw like the biggest 100 year chunk of, I mean, anything that's ever happened. Kind of crazy. There was like a little plaque to him and he's from Harrisburg. That's why he was in there. So oh, that's cool. I yeah. mean, well, it might have been interesting for him, but uh, yeah, it's like, it's a cool fact. I, I mean, for that guy, he was just like, oh, again, some other big shit storm. Like, oh my God, like every. I, so can't but wait. hey, must have, I mean, it must have been okay because he was smiling in the end. <laughs> Picture there him you smiling. go. I just read a couple weeks ago that a guy that had gotten Spanish flu and, um, survived he also got covid and survived so he's like come at me like that guy's living forever yeah <laughs> status up there so what do you do for work uh i'm a safety consultant i used to work for um do the safety consulting for dcnr which is department of the conservation of natural resources um but right now i'm with dhs uh, department of human services uh doh it's kind of boring but i like it and that's all that matters so <laughs> so what do you do um, so I help, uh, different state agencies with their safety programs, whether that's like writing protocols or, you know, saying, Hey, we're seeing, you know, looking at our, uh, injury data. Here's some things that we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of slip strips and falls. We're seeing a lot of this and that. What can we do to prevent that and drive our numbers down? Cause you know, injury numbers are money numbers. Like I said, it's boring, but I like it. So. I mean, does it, uh, cause a lot of the races that you do are pretty gnarly and would, I don't know if they would pass a uh, uh, safety inspection. Does any, any, is there any translation like, oh, this is uh, probably not um, safe. I should run it this way. It's funny because like, I'm usually a pretty safe kind of guy. Like, I mean, I like, you know, skateboarding and stuff like that, but I don't take huge risks. I, I kind of, even like when I'm running, I'm probably taking the most risks I'm ever taking. Like I'm, you know, taking different lines and stuff like that that are like, oh, this might be a little sketchy, but I'm just going for it. You know, like, I don't know, I, uh, I don't really chuck, like, huck myself around when I'm on a skateboard. I'm like, uh, I'm okay with not doing that. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I don't know. I stay low, low key on that kind of stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I guess I've always been kind of like a, you know, weigh the risk reward. I mean, you're always weighing risk reward. Like, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And I tend to always err on the side of caution. But not in running. <laughs> but not in running. Go for it. Sure. Uh, so how, when did you start running? Um, okay. So it's kind of like an origin story. I, um, I was running, um, I guess my first time that I ever ran per se, I didn't even know that people did it was soccer practice in high school. Like they, uh, we had this route called the horn and it had this gigantic hill and it looked like a horn. Like it was an outline looked like a horn. And, uh, they made us do this, this thing called the horn. And I was actually wearing like, I think I wore my cleats cause I didn't have running shoes. And then I ran on the asphalt with cleats. It was like a two mile loop or two and a half mile loop. And I didn't even know, I was like, we're going to run that. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I was like, I mean, I knew people could run across the field cause we've been doing it forever. But I was like, people run, they don't stop. They run this whole way. And anyways, so then we did that and it sucked. And then I was like, that's it. I got to get, I got to get running shoes. And I got like, New Balance 625, like the classic dad shoe, which is not a running shoe. And I thought it was a running shoe. And I was like, sick, I got running shoes now. I'm going to make sure I make this loop my bitch. And I went out there and I just tried to suffer through and like not stop. That was my goal. I was like, I can't stop. And then after that, I was like, then I got to beat Frank and Isaac because they were fast. And I was sick of them moving past me and just like, I mean, if you got to the bench first, you got to relax until the last person showed up. 
And I was the last person the first time. Me and Dauber, this kid named Dauber, who's our goalie, we walked like the whole thing. And then I was like, I can't be walking this. So, but then I get to high school or college, and it was my sophomore year, and uh, or going going into my sophomore year, I guess. And I had been, you know, doing some running, and like I thought I could make the soccer team, and this wasn't quite good enough. So I had this like, you know, little bit of fitness already, um, just running like two miles every other day. And then uh, end of the year, we had a power outage on campus, and I was like, you know what? You know, all these people were doing crazy things. They were like, you know having sex in the middle of the field at the, the football stadium and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I need to do something crazy. So my friends were like, Hey, we're gonna go smoke weed on the president's porch. Cause he lived, the campus president lived on, he lived on campus. So I was like, well, yeah, I can, I, I can do that. And I never really smoked before. So I was like, I can do that. So we went on the president's porch and we smoked. And then, um, like I said, this is the end of the year. So I get a call back. I applied for a summer job with my dad and, um, uh, they were like, Hey, you got the job. You just got to come in in like five days and take a drug test. And then you'll be, you know, then you'll be good. And I was like, uh, and then, so I, I looked it up and like <clears throat> THC is the detectable agent in drug tests and it's fat soluble. So I was like, okay, perfect. I'll, I can sweat it out. So then I started running twice a day as hard and as far as I could each day, which was like three to five miles a clip each time. Um, and then after that, I just kind of stuck with it. I was like, this is kind of cool. That's <laughs> That's the story. That's the best story I've ever heard as to why somebody you know, started running. Like, I, somebody asked me this, and one of my, my friends back home, they asked me about it, and they put it in the local paper, and she put it in. She, she uh, emailed me, and I just wrote the whole thing out, and she put the whole thing word for word in the newspaper back home, which I'm okay with. I don't care. With, I think it's a funny story. But uh, she like my town where I'm from, my parents are from, is like super conservative religious like german catholic people and they're like i just felt like it was gonna i was like i mean i didn't care but like some people were kind of like uh, some people were like hell yeah and other people were just kind of like what like, don't smoke the devil's lettuce kids like you know i'm like hey you got smoke me if you got them where did you go to college uh, i went to uh, slippery rock university Okay, okay. Named for a town where George Washington and fell on a slippery rock in Slippery Rock Creek on his horse, chasing some Native Americans around, and then they fell in the creek. He was like, that's it. I'm never coming back here again. This place sucks. Full of slippery rocks. But like, when they would talk about it and be like, hey, remember when George he fell in the creek on that slippery rock? I'm like, yeah. Loser. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't George's fault. It was his horse's fault. So... You know, he's probably like just pissed off about his teeth. Um, so then, did you start running like for the school or just on your own? Uh, I well, eh, well, I started um, like running. I started showing up to track practices <laughs> like some sort of pirate. Like I would like, are we going for a run today? We're going to the track, and they'd be like, we're going to the track, and I was like, okay, I'm out, and then I would just go run somewhere else. But if they were gonna go for a run around town, I'd be like sick, and I'd link up, and. Uh, so yeah, I made a lot of really good friends that way. And uh, actually, after college, uh, the coach got remarried, and he actually invited me to his wedding. So oh, got to know him. Nice. He was just like, he was like, "Hey, you gonna join the team?" And I'm like, "Uh, I mean, I don't know." And then he'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> so yeah, we hang out. We ride. We actually, uh, he's a good friend of mine now. We drink beer. We ride bikes. Sometimes we eat peanuts. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm in town. He's like, "Yo, dude, come over." So I mean, and then you know, I made friends with all the guys and you know, girls on the team and. So, uh, yeah, not officially. I ran one race. It was an 8K cross-country race. I jumped in, uh, and then I was like, that sucked. I really, that sucked. And I was like, I, I, ugh, I'm not doing it. But then I came back to it, so. That was cross-country. Yeah, it yeah, was cross-country. Cross-country like, looks brutal to me. I've never ran a cross-country race, but it looks like just a lot of anxiety when everybody's just like just going all together in that field i just i see a lot of bad things happening i like it now i like that that like high level of pain and you know just all out whatever but well, because now you're fast so like you just go get out and you don't have to worry about that poor sats behind you or i would probably have to like jimmy my way for some sort of and i mean like so <laughs> But I, at least in, in college, we had a lot of like studs and 
just really good runners that came out of our district or whatever district or what am I thinking conference maybe see I didn't run I don't know but there was a lot of really smoking fast people and uh you know I, like Pat Reagan he ran Slippery Rock Morgan Elliott oh, really? ran, yeah Pat ran Slippery Rock Morgan Elliott Jeff Weiss I don't know if you ever heard of him he was a him and Pat were good training buddies um and I'm sure that I'm missing out on all kinds of people like uh Aaron Dinzio a lot of there's a lot of fast road and um oh crap what's his name Alex Monroe he was on the U.S. cross country team the world cross country team got like sixth or something stupid like where you like where they advertise it in Scotland and they're running around the mud and you see like that one guy that can't remember his name of the beard the American that won it a couple times he raced against like Mo Farah yeah well this guy was like Alex Monroe he ran in the at Lock Haven so in the same conference or whatever and that guy came and he was six. So he was, like, what do you think? Like 35 minute behind those guys? I don't know. Crazy. I Fast think uh, in, in like track and cross country, the East Coast is actually very, very competitive comparatively to the West Coast. Yeah, I think people get good here. Like they're, you know, they're born and bred here and like, you know, so they have a good background and they learn to run here and then they move out West. And then eventually I think they come back. You know, it's like, I don't know. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I think there's also like going to Arizona or California, Colorado, like there's altitude there, which is, there's something to be said for that, but you know. Yeah, you can't fake that. That's real. You know, with all the masks that we've had to wear, I actually considered like, should I buy an altitude training mask? Because maybe it'll help, you never know. And like, if we start branding it that way, maybe more people will wear them. You should think about Did that. it work? I've had a lot of good ideas during this quarantine. Did um, you write them down? Uh, well no because smart. But the other, so the other one was um you know how there's western states which i know we'll talk about your like love of ultra distances there's western states and then there's eastern states and i feel like western states it is like the super bowl but what i think we should do is western states and eastern states and then the top 10 men and women do a like mid states Oh, you mean the Mississippi like a, hustle? Like a Super Bowl somewhere. And oh, East versus see, West. Then East we versus see, West Bowl. Yes. Then we see who's the real cream of the crop. I really do need to think about this, actually, um, because that could be something that claim to fame. Yeah, that's cool. Here on the Trails Collective, on the Trails Collective interview series, yeah. Hmm. Well, anyway, speaking of, uh, so I was looking at all your results on Ultra Sign Up, which it's basically a library, so it took me a little while, and I was trying to look for one ultra distance race, and there are zero. There's a marathon. Well, and hey, I now, I was going to say, is it, isn't that Boulder Beast, isn't that, like, close enough? The one uh, year, I swear, the one year, I swear, was 27 miles. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, there is a marathon there. Oh, um, my so God. So, you are very fast and with the technical trail but you also just you have not uh as of right now done any ultra distance trail gnarly things but all of your short stuff are like really short gnarly things but like snowshoe things so what keeps you going for more shorter stuff rather than i guess graduating or going up to ultras i mean that's just what i like um I don't know. There's like a sweet spot, like 25 K is kind of like where I like to max out. Um, half marathon, 10 mile, five K's are really fun. Like we have one in Scranton that goes up and down the slopes, five K. So it's like a bleeder. You're just like bleeding out the whole way and just trying to make it to the finish line without, you know, being a pile of crap, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It's fun. It's what's fun. So like, I just, um, I like the intensity. I really, um, I respect that so much because I think that so many people get into our sport and then they're like, I ha I'm not a real runner until I do like a hundred miles or like a marathon or whatever. And I mean, the second most frequent, well, actually probably the most frequent question I get nowadays is when are you going to do your first hundred? Which now I can be like, I don't know because the world is shut down, but I honestly just don't want to. And really? I mean, I, I like, <laughs> And I'm not going to just go like, yeah, I'll just go run 100 to feel like a real ultra runner because I don't think that's true. And I really respect that what you like to do is run fast on these jagged rocks and somehow not fall and you do really well. So I mean, The rattlesnakes help you from not falling. Rattlesnakes? You, yeah, you don't want to be laying next to the rattlesnakes. I, I never thought of this 
about that. I didn't know there were rattlesnakes. You just got to know where the dens are at. Like, I mean, for sure, there's sometimes where you're like, oh, there's one. But the, you also, like, if you've, if you've, like, run in the area where the Boulder Beast and, like, Roth Rock used to be, you kind of know where the dens are. You're like, okay, well, I'm not going to go through that area. I'm going to go to the right. I've honestly never thought of rattlesnakes when I'm running. Like they usually move. Like deer, deer flies, ticks, that stuff. But mostly, like I just like have someone look all over me when I get done, so I don't really worry about that. They um, couple, couple they snakes. they generally don't want anything to do with you, so they move out of the way. They're like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like they're not going to bite you unless they're, I don't know, threatened or cornered or provoked. Um, very rarely do they just, you know. They don't have an escape, so they just strike or something. And they also might not dump venom, too. They can strike and not dump venom. But they're really, I mean, they're a really great animal. I think they get a bad rap, uh, but, you know, for what reason, I don't know. People just don't understand them, and people kind of fear what they don't understand, so they just... And they were made evil in the Bible. So, so evil. What's that? They were made evil in the Bible. So snakes yeah. are evil. I don't know. I guess a lot of people read that thing. I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, but no, rattlesnakes are really cool because they give live birth. And not a lot of reptiles do that. A lot of reptiles lay eggs. Uh, it's really cool that they give live birth. And also, the male has two penises. So when the female, she can decide, yo, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go that way. If she decides to leave halfway through, she rips his dick off. But he has two. So while that one's growing back, he has another one that he can, you know, spread the seed with. I'm just I'm still at the live birth thing. Um, oh, you're still there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll have to digest the next part later. <laughs> it's crazy. I just, you know, that not a lot of reptiles give live birth. I don't even know if, I mean, there might be like probably one or two other ones, but they're pretty unique in that aspect. That's interesting. I wonder, because uh, I thought one of the characteristics of being reptile was eggs. Maybe it's not. Um, well, yeah, but you, then you got to think, there's always an outlier like a uh, platypus lays eggs it's a mammal and it has a poison spur and it's a mammal you know True. and seahorse males give birth yep so that's uh well actually no yes they incubate them and i'm not sure do they transfer them back to the woman no that would that would make no sense they they give birth yes they do um anyway back to running so um how did you teach yourself how to train for the gnarly trails that you do? Because I did one style of your racing and I fell 18 times. And it sucked. How'd you keep um, track? Huh? How'd you keep track? Because that was the only thing keeping me going. I was um, like, oh, this has got to be a record now. Um, I don't know. It was just what was available and what was fun. You know, like I like, I don't like it to be all gnarly. I like it to be, um, like gnarly and then runnable and then gnarly and then runnable. So I like to have some speed sections in there as well, uh, just to break things up. But it was just what was available. And, you know, I don't know. I just say, you know, to my buddies, like, you know, Morgan or Jaron or whoever in college and, you know, we'd be like, Hey, let's go run this thing. And like, just go out on a Saturday or Sunday for, for a run. And, you know, I don't know. It's just the kind of stuff we were doing. Um, do you find that you're redlining the whole time? Um, no, I think for red line, you got to taste blood. Um, you know, you gotta, your, your arms have to hurt and you have to be tasting blood and it just has to be like an excruciating amount of pain to be red lining. Uh, All right, man, like I, threshold. Cause like, okay, the hardest thing about a half marathon for me, and that's my hardest distance right now. I've never run five or 10 Ks, so I don't know about that, but, um, it's because like you... I've never really trained specifically for it. And also you kind of have to be in that like pretty much cooking for the whole time. And it's like uncomfortably long to be cooking for that long. And I'm wondering if it's similar in the distances that you do. I mean, yeah, you're in the kitchen, you know, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it, but it, you know, trail running is like you attack when you can. So if you need a little break, you kind of got to back off the gas a little bit, like on maybe a downhill or something, but then you're like, oh, but I can pick up so much speed here. I don't know. Just, you got to feel it out. You can't like bury yourself in the grave, you know, and have three miles to go, but for sure it's, you know, when you get done, there's nothing left. I think that's a good, that's a good feeling. Cause then, uh, <clears throat> my mantra is if you do your, if you do your best, okay, then you should have nothing to complain about. So it depends on the day. 
what kind of, you know, um, how do I want to say this? So each day, your best is going to be different. So it may not be your A game isn't going to be, you can't, you're going to be on different levels every day because of, you know, whatever you want to give an excuse for, like the alignment of the stars or yeah. your moons. Sometimes you're more tired, it's fine. Right. But as long as you give, if you give everything that you have to give, you know, whatever it is you have to give, if you give everything that you have to give on that given day, then there's no excuses. You can sleep well. Every, every time I've gone out and I haven't given everything that I had, I'm just like, ah, oh, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that, which, and you don't need to be doing that. So as long as I do, as long as I give my best on that day, then I have no regrets. And it's easier to do that with a shorter race than it is a longer race because you can just, you know. Do another like, one and a half Yeah, I don't have to worry about running for 16 hours. I just got to worry about, you know, 16 miles. So. Yeah. There is a beauty in shorter running. Like, um, I know that uh, I prefer to do, like, speed work in the middle of the week rather than go, like, do two long runs on the weekend. So it just doesn't, like, it doesn't appeal to me right now. And I also just want to keep my speed legs now that I finally have them for marathon training. I think it'll actually translate well into the next stage of life that I, whatever it ends up being, which I don't know. Um, when there's a lot of controversy between, like, when to hike and when to run and how have you um like i guess determined when it would be better for like hands on your knees rather than like the video that i just saw you running up higher like something that looks like that i like to i like to run the whole way and i think a lot of people will tell you like no if you hike you'll save energy and i don't know i just like to run the whole thing you know like just keep pushing on because for me it's hard once i stop it's hard for me to want to run again. So even if I'm, you know, I feel like there are times when I'm like, you know, I am wasting energy here. I'm going just as fast running as I am hiking. But then again, I think I can't be because I have to be going at least marginally faster, even if I am expending a lot more energy. I don't know. And then for me, that's just, I like to, I like to get in there, the nitty gritty and just kind of grind it. I think a lot of people were like, no, you should hike it. Um, a lot of fast people say that they hike in the middle of their races, but I just, I don't really, I don't know, it's not my thing, so I don't do it. Yeah, probably if I was running, like, yours are also worth thinking, like, sub-ultra distances, so I feel like also I would do the same thing if I was running, like, a sub-ultra distance, because I think that in the longer the race goes, the more time you have to play with, whereas, like, if it's a shorter race, you don't have as much time to, like, come back from whatever you've done. Right. So it might just make sense. Because then also I feel like when you crest the hill at the top, you're, run you're going to be running faster. But then also, like, that's when you recover. So it's okay to, like, you know, get your heart rate up. Like, I don't try for – people say, maintain the same effort. I'm like, no, it's harder to go up a hill. However, when you get to the top, it feels a lot easier to go a lot faster. Uh, yeah, and I think that um, – I don't know. I think that uh, – especially in training, it's important to at least run up the hill because then, it, and then eventually you'll be running up the hill in races. Yeah. You know, I, I see a lot of people go and we go and like, just, you know, out friends or whatever. And some people are like power hiking. I don't know. Um, I think it, it helps you, helps to teach you how to handle high, have a high tolerance for pain, which that's all racing is, is like who has the highest pain tolerance sometimes. I don't know. It's, it's training. I think that, you know, People, you know, could go a little harder, but they don't trust themselves to or something. And when you're training, that's the time to do it. That's like, that's like practice, like for any sport, you know, practice is a time to do it. So when it comes to a game time situation, you can execute. That's what, that's why we have practice, you know, practice and practice and practice and practice and execute. So I don't know if you want to run up hills and races, you should be running up hills and training. And then if you need to stop at the top, I mean, Hey, you, you earned it. Take a stop and be proud of what you did. and where you're <laughs> Yeah, get yourself a beer. I hid one under the stump. Yes. Yeah. Good old stump beer. I hid it when I was drunk, though, so there's a good chance that I can't find it until I get drunk again. I had a friend like that in college. He would hide it in the rafters. He would go like this. Like, he would, he would drunk. He would, he would hide it for himself when he was drunk, and he'd be like, and then he'd be like, okay. And then he would forget about him. And the next time he was drunk, he'd be like, oh, hey, look. Should we probably be for a test that way? Oh, crazy. He did it all the time. I was just like, 
how'd you forget about that? And he's like, oh. <laughs> I saw one where this guy was like, um, my wife hid all her candy when she was drunk and told me not to tell her where it was. And now she's real pissed because I'm not telling her where it is. That's awesome. I wouldn't tell her where it is if it was Reese's. Or, or I would go to the hiding spot, take the Reese's out, put it in my new hiding spot, and then give her, you know, the licorice and all the bullshit that... Oh, good idea. She can have that. You can have that, girl. I'm taking the Reese's. <laughs> the licorice. Because, <laughs> you know, licorice and Reese's... I don't... Just every time somebody it. offers me licorice, I want to have it. I want to enjoy it. Like Twizzlers and stuff. You'd think I would enjoy Twizzlers because everybody seems to enjoy Twizzlers, but every time it's offered to me, I'm just like, get shit away from me. Okay, like, just, I, I mean, okay. There are there two types of Twizzlers, like the one that pulls apart, like well, those red, are pulled, yeah. And, yeah, then, yeah. and then the other one. Okay, the other one sucks. The pull apart ones, though, I can get. Yeah, one. the other ones, and you think it would be a good straw too, and you have like a long one because it's hollow yeah. in the center. You're like, sweet, I'll drink my soda at the movie theater, and when you do it, you're like, this is not only is this a shitty candy, but this is the worst straw I've ever used. Because it's a tiny sucks. bowl. You're like, this sucks. It sucks, and they're like, maybe I can use it as a whistle. Doesn't even whistle. What the fuck? I don't even. I just. It tastes like shit. I don't know. And they're always at aid stations, too. I'm like, do you want to kill me? I don't know. Um, but Not for me. That's fine. Well, like, when, I, when we have, like, when I have the eastern and western states, like, brawl. And, and no the Twizzlers. Country, no fucking Twizzlers. No Twizzlers. No Good Twizzlers. Lord. Thank you. But we can't. Finally, but the, someone understands. And, and the actual race will be, uh, Ellie was drunk and hit a bunch of beer. Go find it. And then whoever gets the most, they win. We did that before too. It's called um, the name is stupid. It was called Beaster Egg Hunt, like beer Beaster. Egg. So we took beer like bottles, and then we painted them, whatever we wanted to paint them with, like uh, you know stripes or you know your really artistic friends had drawings of animals on them. I just painted them solid colors and splashed them with you know paint flecks, and then um, then we hit them around the yard, and uh, then the next day. I think we went to find them. I can't remember how it worked exactly, but we hit them all over the yard and then we went to find them. And Easter's in April, right? So like we found, I found one in a tree in June. <laughs> I climbed up and I was like, I climbed up to, I don't remember. I think there was a dead squirrel and I was trying to put them artistically in the tree, this apple tree. And then I got halfway up there. I was like, hey guys, there's a beer in here. So I took it out and it was from the beast. It was painted with like a Pokemon or something. And I was like, I was one of Brady's from the beast I got. So I took it down and I was like, do you think it's any good? Chris was like, hell nah. And then he drank it anyways. I had diarrhea for a week. Oh my God. <laughs> Skunked. <laughs> anyways. So uh, what are some of your local favorite races? I get, I get the sense that you like Heiner and that you like the VK in Vermont. Um, and Wesley also spoke highly of Heiner. He really likes it. I'm surprised that you guys, do you guys know each other? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah. not like, I not like real well, but like, I mean, I do talk to him when I see him. Unless he said he doesn't know me and then, fuck, I don't know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't ask. I'm sorry. I didn't, re I didn't like notice that like last year you won. And then he said last year he got like 10th. It wasn't a great race for him, but I was like. Oh, yeah. I, I remember that. I remember it. He didn't have a great year. But then the year before, I think he won. I don't know. Yeah. He just had a bad yeah. year last year. Stubbed his toe uh, so, or something. Uh, tell me about the uh, races in Pennsylvania that you like to do the most. Um, they each got their own flavor, so kind of hard to pick any favorites. Uh, I do like Heiner. It seems to be a crowd favorite. Um, can I talk yeah. about Can I talk about the white face, though? Can I say that that is one of the – I mean, that is Humble Hill. That is – if you want to test yourself, white face is the place to go, especially the VK. Or going down on the – they do a short race on the up and down, like the, I um, oh, can't remember the name, but Marshanks or something, the AK. So you just go up and then you go down and it's like straight up, straight down. So your legs are, if you did it right, your legs are burning, you're dying, you're, it feels like, it's unbelievable how much stress your legs are under. Okay, back to Pennsylvania. Um, hmm. I, I really enjoy the, the 5K and, and uh, 10K that they put on at Montage Mountain in Scranton, it's, uh, it's on ski slopes, um, but it's like an all-out assault for a 5K, and, and then they do another one later in the year, the 10K. And I think the 5K is the best one. I think that's the best distance because it's just like, you know, you go up, then you go across, and then you go up, and you go across, and you go down, and then you go, you know, across. It's like really challenging, really, really challenging, really fun. Ben Robinson runs that one. 
well, he runs it, but then he also directs it. So, and then after it's 20 bucks, you get beer afterwards, like most of these things. And then you also have free access to a water park. So there's a wave pool, there's like slides. Um, there's two B thing. Oh, and then there's a Swedish meatball, which is like this blue yellow funnel that you get in and you go, oh, and you want to get, you want to go back. So you want, when you get up there, there's two of you in the tube and you say, but I want to go backwards. So the guy will spin you around like the kid that's on lifeguard duty. And then you push. And then if you're the one going backwards, I mean, you got to go up twice for you and your friend. And then if you're the person who's not going backwards, you have to like pump them. So when they get near the edge, you'll spin into place right before you like drop down onto this like vertical going into that pipe or that you know funnel. When you get right about to drop and you're in the person who's going backwards is like, like just kind of like a sloppy banana peel, like going over the edge. The guy in the back has to go and like throw it all forwards. And then the person that they get, oh, they go so fast. It's awesome. All right, you're stuck with it. Like, honestly, it kind of sucks like that I'm learning about all these races right now because I think short trail races, I'd probably do all right in as long as like, as long as I practice the footing. And now I'm like, oh, he's selling it. I just got to get down there. Um, but TBD, well, just next year, you know, I mean, plan it. <laughs> I missed the last thing you said because it glitched oh, up or something. I mean, considering this year, there aren't really any races. I mean, it's just like, I have all these races that I'm like, oh, that'd be a good idea. That'd be a good idea. And I've always admired what you do because I'm like, that's such a good idea to do shorter trail races because I mean, I can work on my leg speed, keep my leg speed. I won't destroy myself with like a 17 hour day and it's fun. And I think it would be really cool. And you're selling it though with that water park. I tell you. I think one of the, one of the things that's been, you know, really cool since we've done the races, uh, me and a couple of my buddies down here in Harrisburg have been doing is uh, we call the game called hut fug, which just stands for harden the fuck up game. <laughs> and it's basically like an Indian run. So we'll go out to, um, we come from all over, but we, we, there's a nice Valley Clark's Valley road is a middle ground and the AT is on one side and there's all kinds of spur trails that go up like a thousand feet in a mile. So we'll go out and we'll pick like, you know, we'll go out and do like a five or six mile run. And when we do the run, we'll just pick a segment. So we kind of like do a warm up mile, or whatever to the segment that we want to do. And the valley is pretty long, so we can just pick whatever spot we want to go to. And then uh, when we get to the segment, we kind of stop, and then we let the slowest guy go first. And then the slowest guy goes, and then the next, the next fastest, all the way until the person at the end is the fastest person. So usually we work it out to – we figured it out now where no matter what climb we're on, if there's the five of us who are out there, um, wherever, wherever we go, as long as I give – like, for example, usually – um, the person that I let go, I usually give them two to two and a half minutes to try to catch them. And I'd rather not catch them. I'd rather make me work so that I can see them and I'm right on their butt and I'm working, but I can't catch them. So you want to be cut. You want to not get caught and then you want to catch that person. So it's, um, it's kind of motivational to, you know, just see how fast a segment can be done and between your group of friends. And it's kind of like having a race in between a, a fun social run. Yeah. I, always, um, I train with two other women and they're um, faster than me. And so I really benefit from when we do runs. I'm like, I'm just chasing them because I don't know what I'm doing and they're faster than me. So it's, it's really, it's beneficial and it's fun. Yeah. I like, I miss running with people. It's uh, that'll be really fun when we get to do it hopefully soon, but you never know. it's always better to train with people, no matter what you're doing to be around or train people that are better than you, because that makes you come up to a level. Like if you're, if you're, you know, playing any sport or doing anything and you're playing with people that aren't quite as good as you, you tend to drop down, not to be negative and say that, but you tend your, your style of play or your level of play drops down. If you're trying to, you know, you're playing with people that are better than you, you're only going to rise up. So that's really good. Yeah. Um, I think in the beginning for me though, uh, like it was a little bit intimidating because I was always like, Oh, they're better than me. Like they're not going to want to, but, but, and people say that to me, they're like, Oh, I don't want to run with you because like you're faster than me. And I'm like, that's, it doesn't matter. Like we're the point is for all of us to get together and do something hard together. That's the point. It doesn't really, you can do your own workout. It just, we're all just meeting. That's the point. It's pretty fun. Uh, all right. So I think I had another question, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, Oh, 
So FKTs, are you interested in doing any FKTs? Have you done any? I did not look this up, so I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, what's FKT? Um, I don't really do FKTs. I just like to go out and um, I kind of like to work on Strava segments, not necessarily hunt Strava segments, but I like to just go out and run. And, and if there's like a cool climb, I'll be like, I wonder if I can hit that in my run and, and get the, get the segment, you know, and I kind of figure out where it starts. And, you know, I don't, I don't like save anything per se when I'm out by myself, but I don't really do FKTs. I just like the shorter, I mean, even then it's like the shorter stuff, but um, I did look up and, and I don't know if there is one on it yet, but there's the Darlington trail right here uh, on the mountain over for me, about 20 minutes away in Enola. And there's a, uh, the Darlington trail, it's 18 miles long one way. So I figure there's at least there's, if there's not, there should probably be three, like a east to west, west to east, and then a, a there and back again kind of thing. Um, but I would, you know, maybe if that was an FKT, I would like to do that as a long run, not really an FKT, but just to do it as a long run and see if something exists. And if it does, then that's fine. But I told Clayton about it. And I don't know if you you know, know who Clayton Bouchard is, but he's been, he's been out there, you know, running FKTs since this whole thing started. And, uh, I figured just, I don't really want to do it, but it sounds like maybe some Clayton want to do. Plus it's local for him. So. So on um, something like that, how long do you think that would take you? An 18 mile run. Um, the Darlington trail is pretty flat. It goes up onto this gigantic ridge. So, um, and the ridge is like full of four-wheeler paths and all kinds of stuff like that. I can't believe how flat it is. I just checked it out a couple of weeks ago for the first time and I can't believe how flat the ridge is. So, but I mean, it's a trail, so it's hard to say. I, I really couldn't give you like, well, I don't even know. I would wonder like, do you carry fluid or fuel with you or anything on these things? I usually don't like to unless I'm going to be out for more than <clears throat> like two and a half or three hours. If it goes past two and a half or three hours, probably three hours is when I want to start carrying water. Um, like I run with Alejandro and some of the guys on the Conestoga Cowboys. Uh, we get out, yip, yip, we get out down there on the, on the Conestoga or the Mason Dixon trail on the, you know, opposite sides of the Suzy Q, the Susquehanna river. Uh, yeah. So we get down there and uh, those guys like to, I mean, they're fast, but they like to, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, they like to giddy up, get on the cow trail for like, you know, 16, 17, 18 miles. But they also like to like stop and show me like giant spray painted dicks on the rocks and, you know, whatever tourist attractions they have going on, caves. One time we found a cave and they were like, yeah, check it out. There's a cave down there. And there was like a guy and a girl in it. And they were like coming out and they're like, and they're like, it's awesome. You know, and they're like <laughs> coming out. And I'm like, yeah. So, um, so when I'm out with those guys, I mean, they like to run for like four hours plus, like it's not that far, but it's steep up and down. It's technical. The Conestoga and the Mason Dixon are like, I mean, we're, if we go out for 16 miles, we'll probably at 5,000 feet of vert. It's crazy. So, but I'm out with those guys. I mean, if we're running, that's, I wouldn't even like to, I don't even just sit around. If I'm just sitting in a chair, I need water in four hours. So I always take water with them because, and then usually, uh, <laughs> uh, Anthony's like, Hey man, there's, there's like a couple spring sources just off the trail. Like one time he was like, yeah, it's just over here. We'll go get some. And then he like disappeared. we got off a trail and I was thinking off a trail for me is like a hundred feet. And so I'm like, okay. So he's like, yeah, over here. And then he takes off and he like disappears. He like goes over a mountain ridge and like another one. And I'm like, I'm like, at this point I'm like 60 miles in and I'm like, I'm not going over there. <laughs> like I don't even want water. I'll just drink it out of this bottle. So like, he goes, I mean, I was like, and I came back and they're like, where's Anthony? Where's Anthony? And I'm like, I don't know, man. He's, he said it was off a trail and he disappeared. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it doesn't. He'll be back later. Right. I just, I just drink out. I don't drink out of the Susquehanna, but I drink out of like you know there are some springs, and uh, some okay looking runoff that I didn't get sick from. So you know, sip sip. You can always use those straws. So when I lived in my van, it was said like you you should have this straw in your van because it's it'll like filter the water. And I didn't get it, so I don't know if it works. I had one of those, and it tasted like shit. Like it tasted like like if you were to 
take a sponge, a brand new sponge out of a packet, fill it with water and squeeze it in your mouth, like pre-soaked. That's what it tastes like. But somebody else told me, oh, the new ones, man, they're amazing. Like they said, Solomon has something they came out with that goes into a, into like a soft flask, like screws in. So you just fill it up. And oh, it was Clayton. And he said that he filled it up. He needed water, but he was doing like, he stopped at like a beaver dam, scooped up some, you know, some really nasty looking cesspool water, with like, you know, all kinds of larva and stuff in it. And I was like, how'd it go? You know, did you get Giardia? And he's like, no, man, no beaver fever here. So I figure if it works for Clayton in a cesspool, then it's got to work for him. Because he was running, he did like 32 miles. It was called the Thunder Swamp or something like that. I'm like, why would you do the Thunder Swamp FKT? It's just... So he ran in a swamp for 32 miles. There's no fresh water in a swamp. You know, we can try. We can try Twizzlers. Like, oh, just suck up that water. There ain't no, the hole is so small, no bacteria are getting through. I would rather die than drink Twizzler water. Get those <laughs> things away from me. So what are your, to close out, what are your plans for the spring and summer? Um, I guess one day at a time. I'm kind of enjoying what I'm doing. I mean, uh, it's actually been kind of nice um, to just not worry about, oh, man, this thing's coming up. Oh, man, like I got to feel good on that day so I can kick ass and, you know, give a performance. I'm just like, you know, taking a back seat and, you know, hitting it hard and sometimes hitting it easy. And I don't know, like just not worrying about stuff so much. So I may actually race less because it feels good to just back off the gas and not worry about. You know, I got to feel good on Saturday. So everything's got to lead up to that day. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know. Right now, oh, I do have a plan. I want to find a morel. I've been trying really hard to find morel mushrooms since they should be peaking here and where I'm at. And I've seen people looking for them. And I've asked them kind of, sort of. But the thing about mushroom hunters is that they're like Thank super you. secretive. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're super, and I'm like, so how does anybody, you want to identify mushrooms? Because if you don't, you die. Like if you eat a destroying angel, you die. So I'm like, so I'm trying to learn all these mushrooms and, you know, you know, just whatever we have here. And I want to find a morel. So that's my plan is to find a morel before spring is over. <laughs> Will I get one? I don't know. It's been so far unsuccessful. So well, well, at least I have a plan. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks. That, that's a finish line in itself. So. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today, Matt. This has been great. Like, seriously. Thanks for having me. What I fun. miss about, tra- about running is like the community and afterwards, everyone's just telling people. <laughs> it's great. It's wonderful. Um, where can people find you online? Um, I'm there somewhere in the void. Uh, I, I think my name online is Matthias Lipschitz, which people think that's my real name. Is it my real name? Find out. <laughs> get into the DMs. Right, I get I get mailed to the house as Matthias Lipschitz, and I'm like, I I thought that that was a joke because you didn't want your boss to know who you were. Yeah, that's how it started. But then they found me anyways. Oh. Well, I mean, my boss didn't find me, but like you know. But then I was like, okay. So then, but then I just kind of like, I mean, it was already there, and it was kind of funny, and I think it's funny. It's caused yeah, a lot sometimes of confusion. I don't know when I'm trying to message you online which one to do. And I'm like, mm, I guess I'm just going to guess. It's believable enough. I mean, Facebook might be listening right now, so they might get like a, you know, when people had fake names, Facebook may have changed it to real names. Oh. Remember that? Like my buddy, yeah. Boob, my buddy Boob Jackson, of course, maybe because Boob was like offensive. Maybe they, he changed it to Mammary Gland Jackson. And then they made him change that to Bob Jackson, which was like, <sighs> but, He's losing yeah head. exactly but like i haven't gotten a message i mean unless they're listening right now and then i get one but i never got one that was like you need to change your name from that fake shit so even facebook thinks i have a real name like like that. Prestigious. they're like well maybe if he has this name he'll start to shape up wrong oh, yeah they don't know zuckerberg don't know. <laughs> they don't know all right. Well, thank you for talking to me, Matt. And uh, I'm going to let you go. And thanks for coming on the Trail Collective Interview Series. Thanks, Ellie.